Well, we will continue on. You're in Jackson with all the rich people and you had a great time. Who is that? Cheney. Cheney. Cheney's ranch. Cheney's right family. There. Yeah. Well, yeah. They were out there then. Muir, you know John Muir, the famous John Muir. He had his family is I don't know what it was sisters or something were out there and they. Um, or maybe nieces or something. The Muir family, they were supporters. I always remember that. Well, John Muir discovered Yosemite and all these things. He was a big uh, ecologist when there was no such thing like Wasn't it. Wasn't there a, a beer company? Oh, yeah. Uh, Von, Con, Consi von Gontard was the sister of Anheuser-Busch family. I mean, she's the oh. sister of August Bush and whoever those people were. So she had this ranch out there, one of her places. You know, she had a place in Japan and she had a place in Europe, of course, and and so all place. these people went to yeah, the concerts. Yeah, they lived there in the summers and, and they, they supported, supported it. it. They gave money for it. They're the ones that kind of backed it to start it. Huh. Uh, I can't Did even they remember. Have singing the, stuff in there too, or was well, it just mainly concerts? Mm, they had. Singing singer soloist, one of them did the Vesendonk songs. Oh, really? They're, she was from Europe. I'm trying to think. Gatti was her husband's name. I mean, he's a conductor. Gatti Casaza? No, the last name was Gatti. And her name, I can't remember. I remember a pretty blonde woman, but she, um, I think she was European. I mean, they had, we had great people out there come and, con and play with us and everything. The orchestra got better every year because once it started, everybody wanted to spend the summer in Jackson, even though it hardly paid anything, like $25 a week or something. Wow. But everything was paid. We got housing free oh, and, yeah. and I think a food allowance and, and mileage. I mean, it was now they get big salaries to go out there. And, well, isn't it like but some It's It's a big, yeah, it's New York Philharmonic, I think. But that was uh, like 30 years ago or something it started. There's a, on the website that Jackson Hole has, they don't talk about this at all. They start from the time that this, it was a Korean conductor who had been a, from Chicago and his wife was an heiress to some meat company that gave a lot of money. They, they base it all from that time, but they don't say anything about how it really got started and how this, man who was from, and I can't remember his name, the first conductor, started it. He was at the University of Wyoming, and they he knew people in Jackson. In fact, one of the guys, he was a representative, he was also in the Congress or something, he uh, was also a composer. And so he, oh, I can't remember his name, he composed a few pieces that we did, and one of them had a viola solo in it. <laughs> I guess everybody that liked it. Oh, it was funny, but anyway, so that was Jackson. So some day we have to a little bit write about that. Your dad has to, because it's too bad that, that that history is lost there. And I see why people like history of things, because it brings up other facts that everyone well, doesn't so know about. so how many years from when it started to you're saying they started that with the Korean thing. Oh, that was after we left. So that probably six years or so. So they essentially knocked off knocked the whole off beginning. Knocked off that whole beginning, exactly. <laughs> they sure did. Oh, well, that's pretty it, crazy. It's pretty sad, yeah. But well, anyway. that's not fair, especially because you guys essentially yeah, built it up. And I, I mean, know. thanks to they Daddy even getting his buddies to go out yes, there. Yes, exactly. They wouldn't even have had the whole thing. So right. don't forget about that, people. <laughs> it was the Kennys that did this. Tom and Charlene. So there you go. Okay. Okay. So anyway, so then you went on and you played in Quebec and I was in Quebec as a yes. child and went to a million concerts and ballets yes. and I used to oh, go everything. backstage at the concerts Opera's. and I would try to get the, the horn players to give me free candy bars. <laughs> yeah. Well, and they, they did, probably. Get, they did because yeah. I hang, I talk to them, and then I make them hang around the candy machine that was uh, back there, you know, where the lockers were, somewhere, and I'd be eyeing uh, stuff, and someone would always say, "Huh, what's that?" And I would always get them to get me. Candy bar, so, well, that's good. So you're persuasive way back when. Yeah, even when I was a little, yeah, little right. kid. And then you were in Venezuela, so we lived in right. We Maracay went down there. Old. That was an interesting group too, wasn't it? That orchestra was. Oh, because you had all the uh, communists. Yes, it was one third 
uh, East European, that was before the wall fell, and one third uh, West uh, American in West Europe, and which, you know, English speaking, I should say, and then one third from South America. So it was quite a combination. And the. Uh, Ar Eduardo Ron, is that his Yeah, name? Eduardo Ron. He, he had gone to Juilliard, sent by the Venezuelan government, and so. He wanted his own orchestra, and at that time... Was he from Maracaibo? Yeah, the correct uh, party was in power then, you know, because everything oh. changed. Every time a different party got in yeah, power, everything yeah. changed, down to the janitors. <laughs> and uh, so he, uh, Zulia, the state of Zulia, that's where Maracaibo is, and all the oil money, so uh -huh. they got money to start an orchestra. And so he having a link up there in New York, got some New Yorkers, uh, students, you know, or early professionals, and couple couples, I think they were all couples, came down there, so naturally the, or the money was okay mm -hmm. for them. And then the Eastern Europeans, he, because the country, Venezuela, of course, is semi-communist, and even and at that time, and mm -hmm. that was in the 70s, and so he, the, or, the government told him he had to get people from over there, so that they went to the Polish government. They were all Polish, I think. Yeah. That came the there. Kids went, right. I went to school with them. Right. And then the others are were just uh, people, anybody who could get in from South America or wherever. I don't know, France. The concert mistress is actually French. She was. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh. And I uh, can't think of. There weren't that many. Where was the guy, South Abe America. Lincoln? He was the Polish one. Yeah, he was and Polish. And his son was the one that was my age right, in the class with right. him. So, of course, we had names for them. He absolutely looked like Abe Lincoln. Yep. <laughs> he was the first violist. His so son I sat didn't with look him. like that. He was a pudgy little kid. Yeah. He was smaller than the me. The funny thing about the, the Polish element. They were still communists, so they had a communist spy in the orchestra yeah, who reported on other. them. Yeah, and uh, they had to. They he was a spy, but he wasn't. He was like their representative, and they had to treat him with respect. And they all said hello and all that. Well, in the beginning, it was this cellist, and but the cellist got so lax, and he saw how great freedom was, so <laughs> he. He got kicked out, and he actually ran away to, to Caracas, so he didn't have to go back to huh. Poland. And then, so suddenly my stand partner disappears for a couple of weeks, and he comes back, and here he's the new spy, the new guy that they have to kowtow to. And, uh, that was Abe Lincoln. That was Abe Lincoln, and he oh. looked just like Abraham Lincoln, and, and <laughs> that was funny. So that's how that went. That was pretty interesting, and we could always tell what was going on. And, and what they did, um, a lot of the Polish musicians, if they didn't have families that were being held like in bondage so that they'd come back someday. What? And no, I'm serious. If they didn't have a family there that would get in trouble, they decided they didn't want to be Polish anymore. Yeah, I don't blame them. So, the ones that were able to and that had their kids with them and all that, maybe, they, Venezuela. they didn't renew their passports is what happened. They didn't renew their passports or their visas, so they had no passports, no visas. The Venezuelan government couldn't send them back. So eventually, after a few months of this, they passed a law in the Venezuelan Congress to give them passports, Venezuelan oh, passports, oh, yes, so that they became Venezuelan citizens then.